the world for shipping this week. Before I get anything started, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the like and subscribe buttons to my homeboys, Miller Boy Gaming and Heems Gaming. They do great, awesome live streaming content on both on YouTube and on Twitch. Go ahead and go ahead and follow their official Twitch accounts. I'll put the links to their official Twitch, account, Twitch accounts in the description box below, as I always do. And also follow your watch truly on Twitch as well. That's Shaper Speak 007, Shave 007. Shave 007 is where you'll see my live streams. And let's get into this nonetheless. The Flash Season 6 premiere Into the Void. And I gotta say, man, I really enjoyed this pre this this premiere. Because we see a very wholesome West Island family barbecue. Oh, the whole team is just enjoying themselves. My boy Cisco's with his girl Camilla, having the greatest time of his life. And I really and I can and what I really liked about Cisco in this time around is just knowing that he doesn't have his powers anymore. Sure. Excuse me. I'm sure it can be very frustrated that he can't breach his way excuse me, to a day with Camilla the way that he usually would. But it has to, I know it has to feel really good for him to finally be stress-free knowing that he can live his life without looking over his shoulder. Truth be told, if you ask me, Cisco's the one that got away with his, his, his self intact, if you, get my, if you catch my drift. You know, he got away clean, you know. And also, in terms of his frustrations... It doesn't stop Barry from, you know, hounding him about, you know, setting up the Mac in Star Labs, which is short for Mental Augmentation Center, the, the Mental Augmentation Center. Pretty much, you know, it pretty much has helped people, you know, I guess you could say restore people's minds to either a default setting or an even greater setting. Possibly, you know, a machine that was created so then that way it can prevent the mishap of what happened to Harry Wells back in season four. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, or, 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 I'm sorry, wait, season, yeah, season four. And so with that being said, you know, I can understand why Cisco might be frustrated, but we run into a metahuman that can actually summon black holes in Central City, um, just with his mind. He links, he links his consciousness to the black hole. And I must say, man, it was actually pretty cool to hear a Queen's flash play. You know, Cisco was waiting on, turns out Cisco was actually waiting to see when was the most dramatic moment to actually play that song. And that was the moment to have the Flash save Switcher City from a black hole. Now, we all know that there's been several moments where that where that song could have been staying on, but this was a, indeed a very dramatic moment. Um, we see Katie, not Katie, but uh, Caitlyn up in jitters. You know, she almost gets swept away and she tries to summon Killer Frost, but very similar to Bruce Banner and the Hulk situation, Killer Frost is only, is fed up without always coming to, coming to Caitlyn's aid whenever some shit erupts. So she stays put, which is actually going to be a very uh, dynamic, you know, relationship, you know, between Caitlyn and Killer Frost because simply because Killer Frost wants to have a life of her own. She doesn't want to always be the, you know, the person to get Caitlyn out of trouble all the damn time. She wants to have a life of her own. So it'll be like teaching a 16 year old, teaching a teenager how to drive. They have the keys to the car, but they just don't know how to drive it. And that's where we see my boy Ralph Divney, most likely helping her out with that. And speaking of my boy Ralph Dibney, he, he goes and it's hunting down a woman by the name of Sue. And I must say, man, Sue Dibney is going to be his wife, obviously. But I like how they did that with my boy Ralph. He's, he's in, you know, his book is now in volume two. And like I said, he's going to help Killer Frost find herself, so to speak. You know, this is the way that he helps Cisco nab Camilla. You know what I'm saying? But then also, we're going to have a new Wells, of course, as usual. But the only time this one is going to be a lot more interesting, a lot more capable, if you will. He's going to be the one that can really take care of himself in a fight. He's going to be very predictable, unpredictable. And Tom, and Tom Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh said that at San Diego Comic Con, I believe, recently, where this world is going to be different like no other. You know, this one can handle himself in a fight. But nonetheless, you know, something's going to be wrong with his mind. You know, this is literally, like I said, back on the trails, what happened to Harry Wells back in season four. This Wells will be dealing with something, it's, and it's definitely a secret. It's definitely a secret. But it'll, I know it'll literally involve his mind, you know, to somehow go towards, you know, most likely something along the lines of what Harry Wells is. You know, and increasing, in, or in, and I should say enhancing his emotional intelligence, his, his empathy, if you will. And um, then also, blood work. You know, this season's big bad for the time being. Um, wow. Just wow, because this, I've, I've always heard of blood work, like I said, but to see them finally cast the guy, 
I just know Mr. Russo is going to be a handful for this guy because him and Barry are in the same boat. They're both destined to be to be killed very soon. And we find out the exact date for that as well for Barry. December 10th, 2019 is when the crisis begins. It's when the countdown begins. It's when Barry inevitably dies, quote unquote. And come to find out, you know, I just thought about this too. Barry and the rest of the team don't know that Oliver has been talking with the monitor ever since. But I know, of course, they're eventually going to be finding out about that. And it's going to be, a, it's going to piss a lot of people off. It's going to piss people off a little bit. I can say that right now. I can feel it. And then also, Iris going to be coming up, having her first staffer in the Central City Citizen newspaper column. And having her being her own investigative journalist, killing it in the investigative game. You know, it won't just be about armed robbers anymore. It'll be about better humans keeping the spice alive throughout the Central City. And like I said, she'll be having her first staffer, and then she'll be building upon that. I mean, this is the perfect time to do it anyway, right? Given the fact that her husband is getting ready to perish and things of that, and things of that nature. Not to, speaking of her husband, you know, as the show is aptly named, The Flash is being a really quick jerk, so to, so to say the least, because, you know, as we all mentioned, we lost Nora last season. And they never really processed the grief of that. You know, and grief takes a long time to process for a lot of people. It all depends. But I know from personal experience, as we all do, you know, unfortunately, grief never goes away. It changes, you know, throughout time. I mean, I've learned to cope with a lot of grief and you know, tragedies in, in my life. And so this, the therapy sessions are going to be starting next, next week on episode two of The Flash. I look forward to seeing what happens, man. This has been your boy, Jerry Speaks. I love you guys. And then also... I'm going to talk about Bloodwork really quick. Bloodwork, you know, he's a very intelligent and very interesting person. In fact, another strand that ties Team Flash to this very personal story and his villain is the fact that Bloodwork's mother, you know, was a mentor to Caitlin Snow. So there's no wonder Mr. Russo, I can't remember the guy's first name, um, I apologize, and Caitlin have such a history. And, and no, they're not going to be in a relationship. You know, if you ask me, Caitlyn's going to be in a relationship with her own within herself, Killer Frost. And so it'll be really interesting to see that. And also it turns out his mother, Russo's mother, actually died from a very warm, a very, a very rare form of cancer. And just like his name suggests, blood work, he has it too. Only difference is he hates the fact that his mother just let herself die. He wants to stop the inevitable. He wants to cure himself of you know this rare form of disease and live, possibly even past crisis, who knows, you know, we have to wait and see for that, but in doing so, he finds a cure, he, and as usual, something goes away, and he ends up mutating, but we don't see it right off the bat, we see it over time as the episodes progress, I'll say between next week's episode, then three, four, five, and six, I think around season, I think around episode seven, eight, is when we see Bloodwork be defeated by Team Flash, just in time for, um, the crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, and then just in time for 2020 to roll around and then to cap off the season. But like I said, man, this will be really interesting to see. This has been your boy, Terry Speaks. I love you guys. Peace and love.